That's God hearing the sinner say, Lord, would you put off the penalty, amen, for a sin, for a season? Now, if a sinner, I said a dirty down sinner, can get a prayer answered, why can't you get one? You know why? Hey, I believed in God. He just didn't want to become a, a Christian. But he was a believer. I have a lot of people that way. I told you about the guy that, that you know, came down, uh, went to his bar, asked him to get saved. He knew he needed to get saved. He said, I ain't getting saved. If I get saved, I gotta sell my bar. I don't know I'm gonna make my income. He was a believer. Just never got saved. Just because you're a believer doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Right. Amen. Ahab died and went to hell. Mm. But he did get a few more years. God saw him and said, look at him. Man, this guy really wants me to listen to his prayers. He has taken off the king's royal apparel. He's put on sackcloth. He's put ashes all over his body. Amen. That's what they would do. They'd have a fire. All the ashes that were left over, he'd throw all that stuff on top of them. He started praying, and God saw it and said, You know what? This guy actually wants me to answer his prayer. Amen. I think I will. Amen. So I'm not going to let him die the way uh, I said I was going to kill him. I'm going to let that happen to his son. Mm -hmm. That's why she's still going to die eventually. But not now. We're going to postpone for a little bit. Amen. Amen. That's a pretty good prayer, don't you think? Amen. I mean, you're going to go to hell anyway. I mean, if you're going to go to hell, you might as well get a prayer answered. Amen. So if you are bound and determined and, you, and you're not born again and you're in this church and you, a, amen, at least get you a prayer answer before you go to hell. Amen. By the way, you'll notice there's not too many girls named Jezebel. They have prayed and God listened. They have bring his clothes, put sackcloth, stop eating. You can ask my children, all four of them. Every once in a while, Daddy will just say, I ain't eating no more. You say, why? I need God to do something. I'm going to fast. That's my Catholic part. It's called Lent. They call it Catholic part. It's Lent, right? You know, you give something up. All right, that's, that's my Catholic part. It's in the Bible. It's called fasting. Though. So I fasted. You say, how many days have you fasted? Well, the longest when I was a young man was what? 190 days, 120 days. I just quit eating. Because I needed God to answer the prayer or God to tell me to stop fasting. Because I was dead serious. I must have an answer from God. Unfortunately, most Christians really are not that serious about their prayer life. You want me to give up eating? <laughs> Can I still have breakfast? No, that's eating. <laughs> How about lunch? No, that's still eating. The easiest 24-hour fast is you quit eating at 6 o'clock. You go to sleep, you miss breakfast, you miss lunch, and at 6.01 the next day, 24 hours, you have dinner. You've now made a one-day fast. Ta-da! <coughs> See, 
how easy that was? <laughs> Amen. If you're going to start, start small. Amen? Amen. And if you have one of these fasts, I'm going to give you some advice. Do not do what I did, which was stupid. I went to every restaurant and I had my meals picked out. I want two tacos from Taco Bell. I want a, I want a piece of pizza from here and I want this and I want that. After the whole nine days or 120 days were over, I ate everything at one time and I was sick for five days because my stomach was about this big. I mean, it was this big. You eat salad and you eat soup. Real, just broth. Broth and then you build it up to potatoes and and vegetables. If you go on a four day fast, do not eat a steak. Alright? Even though you want a steak, do not eat a steak because you will hurt. Right. You will Amen. hurt yourself. Amen. Nobody of my Christian brothers told me this. Amen? They all wanted to laugh. Amen? Let's <laughs> don't tell them about the best part. <laughs> <laughs> So, I have told you, okay? Mm -hmm. Ahab's prayer had uh, postponed the judgment during his life. And uh, he was definitely a sinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he prayed and prayed and prayed put on that sackcloth, put on them ashes, didn't eat. Ahab's a bad guy. And yet, his prayers were answered. And I can tell you this. He was a very, very, very bad man. I'll give you another. Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. And Jonah, God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach that I am going to destroy the city. And so Jonah said, uh, you're awful merciful God, and a very loving God. You like to change your mind sometimes. I think I'm going to skip out on this one. Which way is away from Nineveh? I want to get on a ship going that way. Not toward Nineveh, that way. <laughs> so God sends a whale. He sends the wind. He sends judgment. The people wake him up. All the ship hands wake up Jonah because Jonah's fast asleep. He's backslid. And you know what? He's so backslid, nothing bothers him. <laughs> he, preaching doesn't bother him. Amen? I mean, you have gone cold-hearted. I mean, cold-hearted. You got a cold heart when the judgment of God has come upon you and you are... Amen. So the people come and they wake them up and they say, Pray to your God. We don't know about God, but whatever God you got, start praying. Maybe He can help us. <laughs> so John finally tells him, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you the reason why all this is happening. He said, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a preacher. And the reason this is all happening is because I'm running away from God. Hmm. Throw me in the water. And if you throw me in the water, the storm will stop. Everything will be fine. Now he's fixing to commit suicide, amen? Because Jonah is thinking, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to drown and I'm going to heaven. That's my logic, amen? I'm going to heaven. I'm going to drown and go to heaven. God had other, other plans. So the people said, nah. We don't believe that story. Every man start rowing as fast as you can and we're going to row that way because none of us is that way. Storms got worse. Boat's fixing to fall apart. Jonah said, you'll just throw me off this boat 
And he was at peace, man. He was at peace. I'm going to heaven. Hey, Amen. He's thinking, I'm going to heaven. Just throw me off the boat and I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Y'all, I'll be fine too. <laughs> so they finally, he, they throw him over the boat. <laughs> Storm stop. All the people on the ship start praying to God Almighty and saying, thank you, Lord, for saving our lives. And they got right with the real God because they knew it was the God of the Hebrews. They knew he was the one that stopped the storms. And the next thing you know, God sends a, an Uber by. Mm -hmm. Or was it a whale? I'm not really sure. I think it was, it was a whale it may be, or an Uber. I'm not really sure yet. I think it was an Uber or a whale. Next thing you know, Jonah's swallowed. He gets to get swallowed for three days. Now, here you are in the fish belly for three days. Mm. You know what smells in the fish belly mm. for three days? Mm. Everything that whale has ate and digested. Right. You are smelling everything this whale has ate. Mm. Amen. I don't even like to go to Galveston because when I get out of the water, I smell. Amen. Can you imagine being in the whale and smelling? <laughs> John eventually gets right with God and says, okay, you win, I'll do your bit. He never said uh, that he would be his master.